argument be noted? The member for Higgins. Thank you, Mr. It's no surprise that the COVID-19 pandemic has affected trade worldwide. It's highlighted our need to diversify and solidify our trade portfolio. It has also shone a light on our internal strengths and limitations, and more importantly, our trading opportunities. As always, Mr Deputy Speaker, the fundamental principle should be about putting our national security first, and this remains so. I'd like to stand in order to thank uh, the committee that I have sat on, the Joint, committee, uh, Joint Standing Committee on Trade Investment Growth, and the Chair, the Member for Dawson, George Christensen, and the Member for Cooper, Jed Carney, uh, who is the Deputy Chair of this committee, um, and the release of the report, Pivot, Diversifying Australia's Trade and Investment Growth Profile. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, our committee had originally undertaken an um, inquiry into the assessment of diversific diversification of our trading services. And it became very clear during that inquiry that, in fact, we needed to look more to diversification of trading partners. And that was the uh, initiation of this inquiry that commenced pre-COVID or early on in COVID in February. But indeed, Mr Deputy Speaker, this inquiry has become even more important and even more urgent as COVID has emerged. The recommendations of this report are really focused around three key themes. Diversification of trade, uh, monitoring foreign investment and protecting our national security interests. Mr Deputy Speaker, we know that trade has long been a driver of Australia's wealth and exports are a key pillar of that. In, in fact, Australia is regarded as an export nation. We've long been beneficiaries of the opportunities created by trade through growth, jobs, increased competition and improved living standards. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, I have a bunch of women in my office at the moment, young women at the Australian National University who are in first and second year, who are here to talk as a female voice in the House of Parliament. And I've been listening to them and their excitement for their future and their excitement with their degrees. And we're talking about how we want them to be job ready for the future. And it's important when they're at university that they think about what their future will be. But as a government, it's equally important that we think about how to ensure that our economy is ready for the 21st century jobs and that we improve and diversify both our trading services to make sure those jobs are there, but also our trading partners so that we can be sure that we're going to continue to be a strong trading nation. Mr Deputy Speaker, we know how important international relations are in this modern and globalised economy. Our most important trading partner, as everyone knows, has been China in recent years. And it has been a productive and fruitful trading partnership that has delivered prosperity for both nations. But Mr Deputy Speaker, our trading relationship with China has recently come under the spotlight. There are tensions in our trade relating to our exports. And this has been concerning not just for Australian exporters, not just for Australian businesses, but indeed, Mr Deputy Speaker, for the people of Australia. And I'm certainly hearing that loud and clear from my constituents in Higgins. Mr Deputy Speaker, during this inquiry, we heard widely and from experts versed in diplomacy from right across the political spectrum about our over-reliance on China as both a foreign investor and trading partner. It was clear from many witnesses that we heard from that a prosperous relationship with China will undoubtedly and necessarily continue for decades to come. This is not about reducing that strong and prosperous trading partnership, but it's a, we've heard strong words of caution about being over-reliant on one single form of trading partnership. And that is what this report has been about. It's about diversification of trading partners. What we heard from witnesses was a concept of a China plus approach. Continue our strong trading interactions with China, but also develop alternate trading partnerships as well so that you have a China plus approach to our trading exports. Mr Deputy Speaker, the supply chain constraints revealed by the COVID-19 pandemic have made it abundantly clear that we need to diversify our trading partners and shore up our international, internal manufacturing capacity. And this is important, and I think Australians know this, because there have been quite significant interruptions to our supply chain, whether it was PPE early on in the uh, pandemic, and I'd like to con congratulate the Minister for Health, Greg Hunt, for the wonderful work he did in ensuring that we had enough masks and gowns to deal with a very rapid, rapidly evolving situation, followed then by ensuring that we secured uh, COVID tests. 
And as we know now, we're also having to deal with the COVID vaccine supply issue. And again, because of that early work that he was doing and the strategic uh, threat that he had already identified, he was quick to move to having onshore manufacturing of our COVID vaccine. And I'm very delighted to say that in the coming weeks, the AstraZeneca vaccine will be manufactured onshore here um, at CSL in Melbourne. And that is because Australia recognises that we need to have formal and solid um, trade and we need to make sure that our supply chains remain that way. On both points, Australia needs to put, not put all of our eggs in the one basket. basket. We understand the over-reliance on any one trading partner is just not sustainable, particularly should the trading pa partner no longer need or want the same level of our exported goods and services. Recommendation one of this report, Mr Deputy Speaker, suggests maintaining our current trading relationships as well as working to expand them with other major players. This recommendation also focused on diversifying a range of exported goods and services. Recommendation 13 in this report also speaks to significantly increasing our sovereign manufacturing capability. And I would say that the Minister for Science or Industry Science and Technology, Karen Andrews, has been driving a modern manufacturing fund to ensure that the six pillars of our modern manufacturing future are front and centre of our strategic direction with our government. And that includes, of course, energy, space, defence, food and ag, of course, health, as well as resources and critical minerals. And this modern manufacturing capability uh, needs to be a sovereign capability. We've already seen this play out through demonstrating strong resilience and adaptability through the COVID pandemic, pan, uh, COVID pandemic with pivoting towards our, our own making of our own supplies of PPE. And now, as I said before, onshore manufacturing of the COVID vaccine. This endeavour is further supported by recommendation 14 of the report to ensure adequate domestic supplies of key resources such as fuel and medical supplies. And Mr Deputy Speaker, I fought hard to make sure that our supply from India for Panadol or paracetamol was kept um, in line. We had to do quite a lot of, uh, dip, apply quite a lot of diplomatic pressure and I thank the Minister uh, for Finance, who was the previous Minister for Trade, for the excellent work Simon Birmingham he did on ensuring that we could have critical medical supplies um, come to our shores in a timely manner. Mr Deputy Speaker, the Australian community have raised concerns also about the level of foreign investment in Australia. And I've heard this firsthand from some within my community. I know this is important because people have been concerned about our interactions with other trading partners. <coughs> Lastly, Mr Deputy Speaker, perhaps most critically, is a consideration that must be given to all matters of national security that remains a top priority in redesigning and reinvigorating trade and investment in Australia. Australia's worked hard in building a culture and country we can all be proud of, one that is impressively multicultural and welcoming. And this must remain and continue. In fact, every MP in this House, I would argue, enjoys the citizen ceremonies right across this country where, in a bipartisan way, we celebrate the multi-faith, multicultural diversity and the rich tapestry that is our nation. We need to support and continue this. But we also need to make sure that we are clear-eyed and open-minded about potential risks. And recommendation six of this report suggests taking steps, steps to increase industry awareness of our national security and national interest risks in relation to trade in investment. I've also heard from my electorate that there is growing concern about foreign influence in our world-class education institutions. And that is why recommendation nine of the report resonates. It asks the government to work with the states, territories, industry and university sector to investigate new options to increase domestic funding for universities and university research. And I'm proud of the advocacy I have made in this um, capacity, having been a previous university professor and knowing that there is cross subsidisation of universities from international student profitability and into the research sector. So I fought very hard to make sure that there is some funding, uh, $800 million of funding being put towards research to help the universities through this transition um, and over-reliance on, on inter international students. But we do also need to ensure that universities publicly disclose the receipt of funding, including for research, from foreign state-linked bodies and individuals. And we also need to make sure that the veto powers contained in the Australian Foreign Relations State and Territory Arrangements Act 2020 allow 
consider restrictions on foreign state-linked funding to Australian universities, where such funding is considered not to be in the national interest. So in conclusion, Mr Deputy Speaker, I thank the committee chair, the member for Dawson, the deputy chair, the member for Cooper, and my fellow committee members, and all of those who made submissions on this incredibly important issue. I commend this inquiry report to the chamber. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker.